I'd like to read for you something brief and then tell you about a personal experience. This is from Dr. Michael Egner. He states on uh, at the Discovery Institute's News and Views website in an article titled, Why Would I Want My Doctor to Have Studied Evolution? He's, he states, I am a professor of neurosurgery. I work and teach at a medical, un medical school. I do brain research and in the 20 years I've performed over 4,000 brain operations. I never use evolutionary biology in my work. Would I be, be a better surgeon if I assumed that the brain arose by random events? Of course not. Don't faint, Neff. You've actually made a valid point for a change. It is true that he doesn't need to understand evolution in order to carry out operations successfully. Of course, your argument is equally as valid for those foolish enough to be suckered in by intelligent design. So there is no need to have any knowledge of God in order to practice medicine. Mind you, there is a powerful argument that says he only has a job as a neurosurgeon because of bad design. You know, your whole argument fails. I couldn't give a flying fig if my bus driver was a creationist who had been caught with his trousers down. As long as he was a competent driver and was guaranteed to get me to my destination safely. Doctors are detectives. We look for patterns and in the human body patterns look very much like they were designed. Doctors know that from the intricate structure of the human brain to the genetic code our bodies show astonishing evidence of design. Yet another in the long line of nephi, baseless throwaway statements. Perhaps you could elaborate on how this so-called design is of any use to the detective work of doctors. That's why most doctors, nearly two-thirds according to national polls, don't believe that human beings arose merely by chance and random, uh, random chance and natural selection. You really are going to have to reveal your source because I suspect that is total nonsense. Most doctors don't accept evolution, uh, evolutionary biology as an adequate explanation for life. Doctors see firsthand the design of life. You see, what he's alluding to is that evolutionary biology, there is really no such thing. But evolutionism, pasted onto biology or any other field of science, provides nothing to science. It provides no knowledge to science at all. None. I'm calling you out as a downright liar on that. Large areas of research, such as that on HIV, are wholly dependent on understanding evolutionary principles. It is not necessary for anyone in a university to ever hear the word evolution to understand how anything in the biological functions. It so is, else I could end up with the likes of you as my general practitioner. You see, evolutionism offers nothing to science. To understand how the cell and its organelles and, and, and its proteins and whatnot, how these things function, it's not necessary to ever hear anything about evolution theory. So you are happy to stay in a rut with your it is so complicated, so God done it slogan. The way I see it is that the cell is so complex that it cannot possibly be designed, especially when you have to face up to the infinite regress problem. I skip a bit now because Neff just goes into a ramble on topics that I and that countless others have already pawned him on. Here is the story that he alluded to in the beginning. I'm warning you the mind boggles. As Robbie Williams would say, Let me entertain you. To, to her doctor the other day, my best friend, and as we were sitting there, uh, he was refilling her prescriptions and giving her something for an ear infection. And uh, he said something about protein, and I said, Hang on, what the hell were you doing there? Don't you have any doctor-patient privacy laws in Texas? You know, the Human Genome Project has led to research wherein, where, wherein they're trying to map the interactions of the P53 protein, and they've just about thrown their hands up and said it seems impossible. They've drawn cartoon boxes, he says, and, and, and diagrams and lines and everything, and said that it, it, it becomes a muck a mess because there is too many of them. Thanks to that research it is known what the P53 protein actually does and they are still working on it. Presumably because of the complexity your friend's doctor would give up on such research. That's what you get when you have a doctor that believes in design. A total lack of progress. Okay folks 
Please pay close attention for the next minute. But I mentioned to him that the Human Genome Project had led to research where they tried, but seemed, it seems impossible to them, to map the interactions of the just one protein, the P53. Sod the P53! Help! Somebody! Police! Loan me a P51! And he looked over at me when I said that and said, you know this evolutionist stuff? And I said to him, I looked at him and said, you don't believe it? And he said, I don't. He said, the cell and the structures of the human body are, are so complex and inter interact interdependent. He said, it's just preposterous to believe that something like this could arise by random chances acted upon by natural selection. I smiled. And he said something about uh, uh, R.C. Sproul and repeated something that he had said. Okay, folks. Hope you paid attention to that little passage. I can now reveal what really happened. I mentioned to him that the Human Genome Project had led to research where they tried, but seemed, it seems impossible to them, to map the interactions of the just one protein, the P53. And he looked over at me when I said that and said, Nettie boy, I think I'm falling in love with you. I smiled. And he said something about exchanging a stethoscope for them their headphones. As my friend Shock of God says, it's the sheer madness of atheism. Hell's teeth, you have Shock of God as a friend? Maybe it's you who should have made an appointment with the doctor. Because atheism is the basis and the preacher of evolutionism. It's where we get it from. You see, a denial that God has created the world and a denial of God himself. Well, until you come up with some evidence, are you really surprised? Oh, watch out, Neff. Your sole source of income is about to do a runner. These people don't believe in God. She's behind you. And therefore, evolution has to be true, you see. But evolutionism ruins science. Whoops. Too late. She's escaped. Looks like you might have to get yourself a job there, Neff. Oh, well. At least you may find some solace with her doctor. Another night. Another smoke-filled bar I played my songs I played on my guitar